I think the biggest thing that most people don't understand about the production of a surfboard is how many people it actually takes to build a surfboard from start to finish. Um, you know, there's a lot of skilled craftspeople that will touch the board um, before it reaches them. I must confess, I've become a big surfboard nerd in the past year. After getting my hands on some of the world's best surfboards from the best shapers, I'm more excited than ever to continue diving deep into all things surfboard design. I've held them, I've surfed them, but now I want to take things a step further. I want to shape them, or at least dip my toes in. And what better board to shape than a twinny, my most recent obsession. Whilst on the Gold Coast, I popped in to see my mates at the Board Lab to see if they could help. I had picked up all my sharp eyes from them over the past couple of years and a great twin fin shape from Alex Cruz of Axod for my twin fin series. This twinny had a lot of great features such as drive, speed and hold, but ultimately I felt that it was missing enough pivot. I simply couldn't turn tight enough. So Alex and I sat down to chat about some tweaks to the design. So you keep a little bit of volume in the chest. Um, I didn't want it too, too curvy and disky. Not so teardroppy. Yeah. yeah. And we got a good inch and a half pulled in mm. at the one foot oh, mark. Oh, so that's the old one. Yeah, yeah so that okay. grey line yeah. is your old one. Mm. And this dark, darker line's what we've changed. Yep. And then, yeah. Taking that, what Kale said, we've made a few adjustments and refine the tail outline and we're going to see the improvements of that to try and get those, that extra tight little hook and a bit more of a performance feel off the back foot. What better than to get Kale in and um, get hands on with the new adjusted version. With an updated file, we're now going to pull what's called a blank, basically a foam block from storage, and send it through the CNC machine before jumping in the shaping bay. One day on this channel, I'll give a fully hand-shaped board a crack, but today I'm keen to get the help and preciseness from the CNC. It's certainly a hot conversation in the shaping industry, purists versus the new school. They have allowed surfboard shapers to refine their craft, make minute changes, and I believe elevate the pastime of surfing by being able to replicate a design feature and work on that over and over and over again till it's dialed. You still need to know what you're doing to design that board. You need to know numbers and rockers and thicknesses and rail thicknesses and outline numbers. And if you've got no experience in that area at all, you're not gonna get a good board, regardless if the machine's cut it or not. Now we can get started on the pre-cut shape. Alex reckons this stage is really about blending the board's features into what you want it to be. Out of the machine, the board isn't ready to go by any means. There's still about 15, 20% of the shape to be finished with a pair of experienced hands. Now, thankfully, Alex is here to provide those and to give me some lessons along the way. What I'm gonna show Kale with this 20 is how to bring all these lines and all the shadows together so we have a finished board that's ready to go into glassing and then eventually be surfed. To be honest, I'm finding this process is actually a little bit intimidating. You can obviously take foam away easily, but you can't put it back. So I'm approaching each pass with a serious amount of hesitation, but Alex reckons confidence and technique is key at achieving a solid shape. And he pays particular attention to the rail line. That's the engagement point. That's the point that, that we feel when we surf. When, when we take off and you engage the rail, that's what's creating the cut across of water underneath your feet. That's going to be the feeling that you're feeling. That blending of the way the rail's tuck is and the arc is the most important part of the shaping process. After a solid hour or two in the shaping bay, the board is finally ready for the next stage of the process. I've got foam dust everywhere. This is ridiculous. <laughs> this is really cool. Um, so once the board has been shaped, it will then move into having its fins installed uh, and that'll either be you know, your FCS or, or, or your future fins, that's they're the most common fin systems. Yeah. Uh, catalyst makes it go up. Yep. 
playing with the fin placement is huge on the twin fin. What feels best, you know? Of course, if I want to increase the drive, I'm gonna pull in a little bit of the tail and then I might have the fins a little more straighter, you know, and up. So that way I have more direction and it holds high speed. The fin and the tail, you can play as, as, as like a whole combination. Now it's ready for glassing. So we're literally gonna throw some glass over it, some, some cloth, and we're gonna create an outer layer for the surfboard because obviously we can't just take that raw foam into the water. It needs a little bit of extra strength and it obviously needs that outer waterproof layer. The more fiberglass you add, the more uh, the stiffer the board will become, but the stronger the board will, will become also. If you're missed a high performance and you want surfboards that may not last as long as you'd like, uh, then you'd opt for the single layer, which is just a layer of four ounce cloth on the top, layer of four ounce cloth on the bottom. This is what you're gonna see the guys in the WCT riding, uh, and your favorite pro surfers will all have that because they're looking for hypersensitivity under their feet as opposed to longevity. We're going to lacquer down this cloth with resin now, but as soon as we add in the catalyst into the mixture, which makes the resin begin hardening into our glass, we've only got about 10 minutes to finish up the job, which gives me about 30 seconds to make pretty much just an obligatory cameo appearance on the outside rail. But I don't think I'm doing too bad of a job. Yeah, he went all right for, for the minimal amount he did. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy watching um, the board get glass because it's starting to come to life. The decals have gone on um, and just, yeah, it's personality starting to show. So yeah, I get a bit of a kick out of watching the resin go down. Whilst we let my 20 dry, I'm popping back into the front end of the store to take a look at some other boards I'll be trying out and featuring here on the channel in the near future. Surfing being a never ending evolutionary journey requires you to remain curious about the crafts you're riding. And for me, relying on the advice and suggestions from different experts in the industry is paramount to progression. Unfortunately though, based on what I've seen, the general surfing population seems to be a little closed minded in this regard. Most guys, on average, they're surfing one to three times a week, trying to ride the one board in everything. It doesn't really work. There's no magic board that's gonna surf one foot and six foot. And understanding that and length is also another thing. People have got this thing about riding really short boards and that was a bit of a fashion and a trend for a while. And I don't think it's still really caught up. And it's just that education of, you know, riding a board that's the ideal length for your height and your ability. The most popular board on the market is not always the one for you. We can find something that's gonna work better. I'm happily endorsing the Board Lab as a trusted resource when it comes to making your next surfboard purchase. And as a sponsor of this video, they're offering anyone who mentions the code BROCCOLI, either online or in store, a free tail pad with any new surfboard order. Whether it's a cheeky 20, mid-length or a high performance shorty, Liam and the crew have you covered. You walk in, you talk to us here, you order a board or you pick a board up off the rack knowing that has started out the back and it's moved the whole way through and it's come straight back here on the rack. Now, my 20 is still drying, so it looks like I'll have to wait and see how it turns out once the experts finish it off. After glassing, the board still needs to have a leash plug installed. It needs to be sanded and then sent to quality control and then finally sent out to the shop floor ready for surfing. I'm actually headed down to South Australia for the winter, so I'll eagerly be awaiting its arrival. Oh, look at that. Just feeling all the, all the rails that I did. Oh, sharp down here.
Okay, that was pretty good. Not bad for his first go. Definitely um, a few technique things here and there, but I'm sure if he stuck to it, he'd pick it up pretty quick. Any surfer, if they got involved at a factory and just, just wanted to learn the process, the biggest benefit they, they'll get from it is just understanding the amount of labor and effort that still goes into your surfboard. They, these things aren't just popped out. These things have go through multiple skilled labored hands and they're, they're a handmade product that takes hours and hours of people's time and effort and sweat and hard work to produce. So much more maneuverable. That was the big key. I feel like with the original two fangs, it took a bit of a wave, you know, to be able to, to rip it around and really, really pivot. But this one, I could feel that tightness in the tail. I could feel the hips engaging uh, with the wave when I was bottom turning, and I could really twist my body and hold those cutbacks and then release when I needed to as well. I hope that they give this new version a bit of a go. I'd love to see uh, Mitchie and a couple of the other team riders give that a go, because that is a high performance twin. Ha <laughs> that was so fun. It's been a fun job, this one. Learning about the process of shaping a board and even jumping in and giving it a go myself. With more time and experience, I reckon I could even shape an entire board on my own one day. And I look forward to sharing that with you here on the channel. But taking this initial journey into shaping under the guidance of experts is definitely a smart step. Now, speaking of experts, if you're in the market for a 20 or any board for that matter, go and check out theboardlab.com.au and get in touch to grab your next best shape. Mention the code BROCCOLI and you'll receive a free tail pad with any new board order. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you soon.